Many intuitives speak about something they could say is a kind of intuitive outsider complex. Basically, when you're an intuitive, you're often very open-minded and you're very curious about a lot of different things. And this might draw you into exploring different subcultures and ideas that aren't really commonly discussed in our society today. And of course, when you do that, it's natural to feel like you're different from other people. Other people are not like you. Well, of course they're not. You actively chose to be somebody different. And now you bear the price of it, which is some form of loneliness and estrangement. But what can you do as an intuitive to connect more with other people and to feel less alone in the things that you do? And how can you continue to be your own unique original person without feeling like you're different or weird or wrong somehow? I remember growing up as a teenager, I was so passionate. I read so much and all these books, they changed me. They changed how I thought about and saw the world. Of course it did. How couldn't it? But when I tried to talk about this with my friends, my classmates, they would often look at me like, what? What are you talking about, Eric? Right? And of course they would say that. Of course they had never read about Stoicism, they weren't curious about philosophy, they didn't wonder about political matters, they were interested in computer games, they were interested in sports, and they were interested in music, right? They were kids. They were people that were just interested in the things that were right in front of them. But I think many intuitives, including me, sometimes have the wrong idea about intuition. So. The truth is, statistically speaking, there's lots of intuitives in the world. And even if you're not an intuitive, you probably have something that sets you apart from other people. Your, your own unique experiences growing up and becoming the person you are today has definitely somehow made you feel like you're wrong for some reason. Yeah, in fact, statistically speaking, if I ask people if they feel like there's something wrong with them or if they feel like they're different from other people, most people will say yes. Most people feel there is something wrong about them, something that sets them apart from the world. Yeah, even non-intuitives feel like they are different, feel that they are rare. Now, when I took the MBTI test the first time, I got the result INFP, introverted intuitive feeling perceiving type. But... Other people in chat rooms and communities were quick to point out that no, Eric, you're not a perceiving type. Everything about you is planned. You have lists for everything. And you seem extremely focused and extremely disciplined in what you do, right? And yeah, it's true. I have been. So many of them said you could be an INFJ personnel type. But when I browsed onto the web and started reading about INFJs, the first thing in every single article was the number one rarest type. Less than 1% of the population. INFJs are the rarest type in the world and INFJs often feel different and misunderstood. So there's a lot of people out there that are preying on the fact that there are lots of people out there that feel misunderstood, feel different. And of course, this is a way to get people hooked and interested. Oh, so that's why I'm weird. Oh, so I'm special. Oh, so I'm unique. Oh, so there really is something wrong with me. And here it is. Here's the answer. Here's the explanation, right? It can be both reassuring and alienating at the same time. Somehow you're validated knowing there are other people like you, knowing you're not alone. But also at the same time, you're told you're alone. You're told you're different. You're told that nobody is going to understand you, right? And most people will then go and gravitate towards this feeling, you know, and here, what I often hear with all intuitive types, regardless if they're INFJs or any other personnel type, right? If they're intuitives, they're going to say, you know, people are boring. People are shallow and superficial. I don't like small talk. I don't like my classmates. I don't like my coworkers. I don't fit in with anyone. I feel different. And yeah, here, the first thing you have to recognize is statistically, there's lots of intuitives out there. Lots of people that are high in openness to experience, lots of curious people out there, but they might not be curious about the same things that you are curious about, right? There are an infinite amount of topics to take an interest in in this world. And while intuitives are generally going to be open to anything new and different and unusual, if 
a wide range of people take an interest in it, it's no longer interesting, right? So the niche nature of a topic is already a core appeal to the intuitive type. Intuitives are interested in things that other people aren't interested in. And if other people become interested in it, intuitives gradually lose their interest in it, right? Because intuitives want to be the first, want to be the people that scout new ground, want to be original, want to be different. And it's just that it's difficult to be different, right? It's difficult to feel like you're an outsider, difficult to feel like you're not like everyone else, because of course, this can bring out all kinds of historical, humanistic, tribalistic fears, right? Fears of being branded a witch, fears of being bullied, fears of being cast aside. And of course, every single human being craves human connection, even if they seek or long for a solitary lifestyle, they still want to be able to talk to other people about it. Isn't that strange, right? Yeah. You might fantasize about traveling the world or living in a cozy cabin and writing your own books, but still, you don't want to be alone while doing it, right? And then, but the question every intuitive will have to ask themselves is, how can I stay connected to other people while pursuing these things? Well, it's a matter of confidence, right? But not only. I know a lot of intuitives that score high in confidence. I know a lot of assertive intuitives. And one thing I do see is that sometimes they fall victim to this kind of rebel complex, right? You know, you become so anti-establishment that you're constantly fighting against the mainstream, fighting against the government, fighting against all those people in power, distrustful of teachers, distrustful of adults, distrustful of everyone around you, right? I see a lot of intuitives that are high in confidence that feel that, you know, only I have the truth and everyone else around me is wrong and all other people in the world are sheep. And so, yeah, the answer is don't get blinded by your own confidence. Remember that you too will hold to your own biases and wrongful and misguided beliefs. You, just like any other person, can be incorrect or can be wrong. And yeah, your ideas are not always going to be truth. They're going to be interesting, yes, and they should be discussed. Yes, definitely they should, but they might not be correct. And you need to have the maturity to recognize that, right? So it's not just about confidence. Even though confidence does help you put yourself and your ideas out there in the world, it's also about recognizing and reconciling with the fact that we're all different. Yeah, you're different, it's true, but so are all of us. Every single person you meet has something that sets them apart from the world. And some of the best lessons I've learned through life was, you know, if I would go to a convention or a meetup, you know, and I'd feel like I didn't fit in, like I was alone, like I didn't connect with anyone there. The first question should be, is there anyone else here feeling the same way? Because probably, yes. Probably there are more than five people in that group of 20 people that feel that they're a bit outside. But maybe you don't see it because you're so focused on yourself, right? You're so focused on your own feeling of alienation that you don't recognize that there are many people out there that are alienated. And if you see somebody that's alienated, maybe you should go say hello to them. And here, on top of that, it's recognizing that, you know, other intuitives might not share your fascinations yet, might not be as interested in this topic yet, might not see the appeal of it yet, but that doesn't mean that they won't in the future, right? Intuition is about picking up what's yet to be. So intuition is always about novelty, newness and difference. So it takes time for a new idea to blossom into a beautiful tree or a flower, right? It takes time and work and effort. And yeah, you have to approach it in the right way. I know a lot of intuitives are afraid to share what they are really thinking inside. Because, of course, if you share your ideas to the world, other people can react you for them. They can tell you you're wrong. They can tell you that it won't work, that it's not going to work. And so you have to ask yourself then, what do I do if people do that? Well, the first thing you do is you tell them, yeah, I understand that there are criticisms and I understand that there are reasons why this might be impractical. But how can we make it work? How can I make this work? Because I really do want this idea to work out and I want to check if it's possible. Humor me for a second. Just think and come up with some constructive ideas and criticism to help me on my way, right? Because you don't want people to dismiss or crush your ideas. You want them to help them grow. You want people to recognize that a good idea takes time. It takes time, work and effort. And this is about creating a space where ideas are welcome. And I feel also you have to extend the same to other intuitives and other creatives out there. Because when other people are sharing things, it's so easy to project your own feelings of estrangement and alienation towards them. 
your ideas were never accepted. You always felt excluded. You always felt different. And now other people are sharing their ideas. So of course you want to put them down. If you feel this way, they should feel that way too. <laughs> uh, the, recognizing how you can fall into those kind of projections is key. Recognize and stop. Become aware of the fact that you can hold on to this internalized anger or self-rejection. You can push this on other people and stop yourself from doing that. The truth is, when I met my tribe, when I started meeting and recognizing that there were a lot of people like me out there, suddenly I realized that I was kind of overrated. <laughs> yeah, there are other people out there that are like me and I, you know, I love them dearly for it. And I think it's really reassuring to meet them and get to know them and talk to them once you find them. But the truth is, I'm also kind of overrated. I'm way more interested in people that are different to me than people that are just like me. Because of course, they can teach me a lot more. And I think that mentality is also important, recognizing and being interested in other people. If you can allow yourself to become interested in other people, if you can open up to other people, you're gonna find that people are gonna open up a lot more to you too. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm gonna go out and enjoy this beautiful sunny day.